When we build features in the landscape, usually we think about their function and how they look. However, life thinks about these surfaces completely different. Life looks for shelter, places where water can gather and nutrients can decay. Places that shelter life so that it can grow and thrive. These spaces are generally the cracks, the crevices, the edges of pavement, the places where movement is slow or reduced, and this gives the opportunity for life to grow and thrive. Over time, these surfaces can become micro-ecosystems that you might not notice if you don't look closely. On a micro scale, the texture of these surfaces do something remarkable. They protect life forms, they capture small amounts of moisture, they capture decay as it blows past in the wind and hold it on its surface so that life can grow in these places that maybe humans on our scale don't notice or we move past too fast. This life, the biodiversity of the landscape, the life that grows on the surfaces of our walls, it always comes back to us because we are also a living, breathing ecosystem and everything we touch and interact with affects our own microbiome. When we touch and interact with these surfaces, we are always exchanging microbes. Microbes are going on our skin, in our airway, and we're also giving off microbes into what is called the aero microbiome around us. We're only just beginning to understand this, but humans are not separate from nature. We are quite literally a walking ecosystem. We're starting to understand how the places we build affect our own biology, mental health, digestion, and we're always in interaction with our environment. So that's why I believe when we create landscapes, we should consider also how do our microbiomes interact with this space. There was an interesting study done in Sweden where scientists looked at a children's playground and a sand pit. They did microbial analysis of the children's skin and the sand in the play pit and they found that it was quite high in pathogenic microbes. They then inoculated the sand with forest soils and then did the same analysis on the children's skin and the sand pit and they found that pathogenic microbe numbers went down and probiotic, meaning beneficial microbe numbers, went up. That would indicate that the biology of the environment affects human health, whether that environment holds biodiversity or whether it's lacking in diversity could have a direct effect on the human microbiome. Throughout our landscapes, we create sterile places places where we don't support biodiversity and we push out what we call weeds, the native plants. We clean surfaces, create plastic lawns. What this study shows or indicates is that when we don't have biodiversity in the landscape, those surfaces can harbor pathogenic microbes that can affect human health. Whereas when we support biodiversity in the landscape, lichens on trees, mosses in the cracks, and plants in the crevices, these support biodiversity in the land, not only in the life that we can see, but also in the microbial realm that ultimately affects our health as well. As gardeners and designers, we shape the world around us. We affect whether life thrives or is deprived. And this has an effect on not only human health, but the modern human world as well. And so next time you're going for a walk, pay attention and notice where life is thriving in the cracks. These microbial 
worlds where you might see moss living at the edge of a pavement, lichen in the trees, or plants growing out of cracks and crevices on walls. And think, how can we support this life rather than deter it?